Good morning. morning. Welcome. Uh, It's good to be with the Lord, and it's good to be together. So thank you for coming to worship today. Really, thank you for coming in, especially, you know, with the time change. I know that can be difficult. As we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent, we continue our message series, When God Doesn't Make Sense. Today's today's focus is on those times when God seems very far away or altogether absent. How can we understand those times? And how can we respond in a way that's meaningful? Let's prepare to engage with the Lord on those questions with a moment of silence. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite our children to please come forward for their liturgy of the word. I'm not sure if you're awake yet. Are you awake yet? I bet you by the time you get back there and you start, you're gonna be wide awake. Okay, let's send them forth with a blessing. reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses saying, why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord.
joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to the grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you do not even have a bucket and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. So are you ready for week three? Week one, we looked at why God says no. And basically, we've come up with the idea that sometimes God knows better than we do and says no to us. And second week, we looked at the times where God allows suffering and death, and why. And basically, we were pointed back to the cross to be able to understand that in God's paschal mystery is life. So today, this third week of the series, we want to look at times 
that God seems uncooperative with us. Have you ever experienced that? Maybe there are times when it looks like God just doesn't want to make our life easy. In other words, God wants to make our life difficult. Have you ever had that experience? It seems obvious that if God would just remove the immediate obstacle, then wouldn't life be much easier and much better? So maybe for you, it's an obstacle in your professional life. You have a systems problem at work and you just can't seem to solve it. Or you have a personnel problem. You keep trying to find the right person, but you can never seem to get it right. And so you don't make progress there. Maybe for you, it's a relational problem. You and your spouse would have a much stronger marriage, but you see your in-laws constantly get in the way. Or there's some issue that keeps you from returning over and over again to the same thing. Or maybe you have an, a health issue. You're constantly dealing with your own health. And if you weren't sick, you could accomplish so much more, not to mention enjoying life so much more. Or maybe you have a problem with one of your children. They're just wheels off out of control. Or maybe they're just out of your control. Maybe you have a money problem. You just keep getting hammered. You never get a break. It seems at times as if God is intentionally placing in our midst these difficult life situations. And so today, we go back to a passage in the Bible, in the second book of the Bible, the book of Exodus, which tells the story of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Do you remember Moses rises up and goes to Pharaoh and tells Pharaoh to let my people go? And Pharaoh refuses until the 10 plagues. And finally, he lets the Israelites go. And there they are, right in front of the Red Sea, with the Egyptians right behind them, ready to capture them again. And then all of a sudden, the water opens. Do you remember that scene? And they go through the water, and they make it into the desert. All the while, longing to make it to the promised land. And where do we meet them today? We meet them in their grumbling and in their grief. Why? They're thirsty. And they start to complain to Moses. Did you bring us out here to die? So that thirst of wanting water to be refreshed, to have their thirst quenched, you know that feeling. It's when you have an expectation and it isn't met. And in that moment, it's very difficult to take the disappointment graciously it's great when you do, but sometimes it's very hard to do. And so we're told, the people find fault with Moses and said, give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, why do you find fault with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? The people find fault with Moses they blame him for their lack of water rather than being patient with him or asking how they can help. They become more demanding. 
On one level, we can all understand that. If you have a need and it isn't being met, it's easy to become grumpy and grouchy, to look for someone to blame. When we have the problem, we always want to blame someone else. But the language here, and in a few other verses, suggests a deeper issue, an issue of the heart. The people thirsted there for water, and they murmured against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Murmuring is an expression of ingratitude, and it seems natural enough, which it is, and harmless enough, which it isn't. It's actually habit-forming, and it can so easily, so quickly become a self-defeating habit that is our default response to any situation. Have you ever met people like that? They murmur and they complain about everything, and it makes them very unattractive, but they can't help it. It's become their habitual response to nearly everything that happens. So Moses cried to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They're almost ready to stone me, he says to God. Do you notice that there's a big difference between Moses' reaction to this difficult situation and to the people's reaction? While the people complain against God, Moses goes right to God to complain, and he asks for direction from God. There is a significant difference between complaining about someone to another person versus complaining to the person. The former disrespects the relationships, while the latter honors it by giving the other person an opportunity to respond. And so the Lord says to Moses, go before the people, take your stick and the elders of Israel, and behold, I will stand before you on the rock of Horeb. And when you strike the rock, water shall come out of it. So God told Moses to leave the camp because by their lack of faith, the people had forfeited the right to see God's work. He simply brought along some of the elders so they can verify what happened and Moses followed the instructions. He called the place Masa and Meribah because of the fault finding of the sons of Israel. Masa meaning testing and Meribah meaning problems or strife. Far from passing the test, they actually tested God as if they needed to see God prove himself. That generation of Israelites never passed the test. They never got out of their murmuring, and so they never got to enter the promised land. They never got where God wanted them to be. A journey that should have taken 11 days winds up taking 40 years. God wouldn't allow Israel into the promised land until the entire generation had passed away because of their refusal to simply trust God in the face of their problems. Is it fair to say that there are difficulties in life that can and should be avoided. There are certainly some toxic situations that sh you should remove yourself from, 
some battles that you can't win, some relationships that are abusive, some projects that are ultimately useless. But be careful of feeling a situation and running away from it just because it's difficult. Some people go from company to company, job to job, friendship to friendship, commitment to commitment, because when the going gets tough, they fly away. Nothing worth accomplishing is ever easy. Nothing worth accomplishing ever comes without obstacles and challenges. And that's not just bad luck. That's on purpose. That's because the obstacles force us to lean into God. And if we're willing to lean into God and depend upon God's grace, God will see that his power, just like Moses did, will take care of us. But if we choose to murmur, to grumble, or complain, we'll probably miss out on the experience of his power and we'll probably never get where God wants us to go. God isn't necessarily interested in making life easier. God's main concern isn't always our level of comfort. That's usually our goal, but not God's goal. The reason God allows obstacles and difficulties in our life is because God tests us. And if he tests us in order to build our character, and he's interested in building our character because our character is the only thing that we get to take with us to heaven. Elsewhere, the Bible tells us, the Lord tests those he loves. So this week, let's be mindful of those obstacles that we face. And instead of looking for excuses, Let's try to lean into them, to recognize that God is building us up, that God wants a response from us to deepen our faith, to love God more. He tests us in order to build our character, and he's interested in building our character because our character is the only thing we get to take to heaven with us. Together, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism, forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the Lord's goodness, let us bring our prayers before God this day. For Pope Francis, may God grant him good health and continued wisdom as he leads the church on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public officials, may God's grace enable them in using their talents for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to enter the church, may God lift their burdens and remove any obstacles from their path. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who worship in this place, may God's grace nourish and strengthen us this Lenten season. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick of the parish, among them, Joan Lowry, Ed Grady, Lupita Rodriguez, Patricia Boyce, that God will bring them healing, comfort, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, among them, Albert Massey, Loretta Tanzilla, Edna Kane, that they will rise with Jesus into eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. And for John Rutkowski, for whom this Mass is being said, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers this day and answer them according to your wisdom and through your love. The prayers we make in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Oh. 
pray, my friends, that your sacrifice and mine might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all your people who minister. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the bliss, blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Augustine and Norbert, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, my roof but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. Be
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. Thanks be to God. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save thou art. Thou my last thought, my day or my night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence is my love. Thank you.